Vanderbilt experience. And Michael Jackson, the Immortal World Tour by Cirque du Soleil captures the essence and inspiration of the King of Pop through visuals, dance, music, and fantasy. Shows at the arena will be March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Those and many other events on their way to the American Airlines Arena, visit aaarena.com for a complete list and all the latest info on all upcoming shows. Uh, what they've done is they've cleared the clock, so it goes back to zero zero, and they've also switched some guys on some teams. The bronze wearing white now, the team don't wear red, so they're going to do that all night. They're going to get different matchups to watch their certain guys play against each other and just uh, just to, to, to see different things that they want to see out of different people in different situations. And last score from six foot seven inch Derek Byers, a product of Vanderbilt, former SEC player of the year. LeBron's pass intercepted by Mikel Gladness and Norris Cole wearing a red jersey getting right by Chalmers. And he will go to the free throw line. Tony, no hesitancy at all for Norris Cole. He's sobering in right to the rim. Yeah, the one hesitation. But the one the Norris Cole. Came down to, and, and, and any NBA player, no matter how fast or quick he is, other guys seem to adjust a little bit. But if he changes speed, changes direction, that's what's really hard to guard. He just did that right there. He hesitated, let the defender st uh, stand up a little bit. Didn't have his knees bent as much as he should, the defender did, and then that's when Norris went by him. Tony, you and I have always enjoyed and appreciated stories of players like Norris Cole, under-recruited coming out of high school. He ended up going to Cleveland, said, I asked him, where else was he considering? And, well, he was so under-recruited, he had committed to a place called Rush College in Canton, Ohio, a small NA Island school that was doing a lot of play football and continued his quarterbacking career and basketball as well. Cleveland State came in late, and he was the winningest player in Cleveland State history by the time his career was done, a part of many victories for the Buccaneers. Gladness rebounding the LeBron James miss. Now the question is how much, as impressive as Cole might be in the first week of camp, how much realistically can a rookie point guard play on a team as good as mine? Well, one of the good traits of Coach Foster is that it doesn't matter what year a guy's in, if he plays well, he'll play. Bosch, top side three, double. Bosch, who made all of six from downtown a year ago, showing his range. He was six to 25, but when he spots up like that, gets the pass in rhythm, he's a much better, he's not a three-point shooter, but he can make that shot when he's catching it in rhythm. Nice move by Juwan. Three of the Heat stories were asked uh, at different times during this week about how they recovered from losing in the NBA Finals and, and what the, the week's following was like. I was particularly amused by Bosch, who said, uh, you know, he got married shortly after the, the Finals. He said, everybody that's married knows that, uh, you know, your wife is boss, and I had to get over it quickly to start planning for the wedding. <laughs> they also said, you know, he thought about the Finals and basketball. He thought about basketball every day in the offseason. So they said, even on your wedding day, he goes, oh, Almost every day. Yeah, Chris Bosch, uh, talking about his introspection. He had eight rebounds a game last year, which was the leading total of the team, but the second lowest rebounding number of his career, second only to his rookie season. He looked back at that. Nice move by Horace Cole again, going into the lane and finishing. But Tony Bosch is determined this year to average over 10 rebounds a game. It's something he's done three times previously in his career. But he hadn't done it in a few years. But that was part of his building up strength and endurance. Very important to him. He said, we were out rebounding the conference finals. We didn't do a good enough job against the Mavericks in the finals. Rebounding. Bosch took that personally. And with the help of Haslam, I think those two guys will be uh, right in the middle of the heat rebounding power this year. We can see he had 8.3 rebounds last year. 9.2 for his career. So with 9.2 for his career, you're not asking too much, I don't think, to ask a guy average almost a rebound more a game but with him with anybody with that skill that size and the ability when he mentally prepares to do something like that then you gotta you gotta feel he's got a shot to do it you know our first conversation with Bosch first day of practice uh, this past week and he was talking about 10 plus rebounds again I said who put that in your head 
He said, I did. But as the conversation went on, he, he did admit that uh, Bob McAdoo, the Heat's Hall of Fame assistant coach, and Heat legend Alonzo Mourning, constantly talking about rebounding the Bosch. And you know the old axiom coach, rebounds bring rings. You know, Bob McAdoo, uh, somewhere in his career, like maybe eight, nine, ten years in his career, is averaging something like four oh. rebounds a game. And there you go. I think it's Wayne Wade if you had one of the bronze at the other end and rolled out. That one went in. A little twist of flex here by Dwayne Wade, the man who can invent the move even in the middle of that move. Well, you know, both of these guys talked about getting back to having fun after the pressure that they had to endure last year, and uh, they look like they're enjoying themselves tonight. You see him coming down in transition. I don't know if this is a better creator on the move in the air than Dwayne Wade in the NBA, because he just seems to get up in the air and then decide what he's going to do based on what the defender's doing. Dwayne has 10 points in this first half. Wade averaged 25 and a half points a game last year. And Wade, of course, terrific in the NBA Finals for Miami. And Tony, we talked about how great Wade looks. Three and a half percent body fat. We talked to him about his off-season workout regimen. He did some different things uh, than the average NBA player would do, like yoga and Pilates and boxing. Worked with famed Miami-based trainer Ed Collins, who long ago trained Jamal Mashburn. But whatever it did, it worked. Wade looks ripped and ready.